بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه تسليما كثيرا الى يوم الدين ثم اما بعد On June the 28th, uh, last month, the entire world witnessed the burning, unfortunately, the burning of a copy of the Quran in Sweden outside Stockholm uh, Central Mosque. And this incident reportedly came out by an immigrant who is originally from a Muslim country. And the police or the authorities in Sweden, they had granted a permit for this shameful demonstration. As we know, the, the court, the Swedish court, uh, ruling that allowed it under the ground of what you call it, the uh, freedom of expression. So this incident caused outrage or global outrage. Some people that were calling for uh, to severe the uh, relations or diplomatic relations with Sweden and even some people or some countries that went beyond the condemnation uh, letter and they recalled their uh, 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 ambassadors to Sweden for an indefinite period. And as we saw, the outrage and the diplomatic tensions raised because of this burning of the and the good thing is the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council. Yesterday, they approved the resolution on condemning the banning of the Quran, and they urged the uh, countries to prosecute and to prevent the disrespect of the religions. So, alhamdulillah. But on social media, everybody noticed the, the anger, the annoyance, and the desperation with the person who burned the Quran, with the person who showed no respect to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And most of the comments, or at least what I see with my, eye, with my eyes, most of the com comments were insulting the person, cursing the person, some that were talking about punishing the person with the most severe penalties like imprisoning the person for the rest of his life, or torturing the person who burned the Quran. Some, they went even further, and they were talking about murdering the person, or, or executing the person, ending his life. Okay, we understand the rage, we understand, we appreciate it actually. We understand that people, every Muslim, was not happy with, with the burning of the Quran. You know, it's a clear cover. Disrespecting the Quran, it's a clear kufr. Disrespecting the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a clear kufr. Disrespecting Islam or Allah subhanahu wa taala is the clear kufr. So everybody was furious actually. Myself, I couldn't watch. I couldn't see the content. You can't see the. I couldn't see the the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa taala. The most beloved book to the Ummah. I couldn't see. It. So everybody was angry, some were insulting, cursing, talking about punishing the person. But the question is, cursing and insulting and murdering the person, does it solve the problem? Does it solve? Is that the, the solution? Scarcely does. It won't solve the problem. We need to solve the problem from the roots. How many, how many commands the person who burned the Quran, how many commands he received? A week later, a person who lives in Russia, he is also from a Muslim community, from a Muslim family, from a Muslim country, he did something more terrible with the Quran than burning. So what is the solution? Insulting and cursing is not a solution. Threatening is not a solution. Unfortunately, in the Ummah, we have people living with us. Maybe they are living in our homes, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, 
behind pages on Facebook, behind pages on, pages on social media, attacking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, attacking Islam, attacking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, day and night. When you see them, they say all these words of, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, but inside their hearts, there is something totally different. So what is the solution? Okay, I understand threatening sometimes, it could be sometimes a deterrent sometimes, but not all the time. When you threaten somebody, when you insult them, sometimes it could be different. How many people insulted them in the social media? Did they change their minds? No. So there is a problem, and we need to fix this problem from the roots. So in the Ummah, unfortunately, wayfully to say this, in the Ummah we have atheists who are living with us in the Muslim community. We have renegades, we have Munafiqeen, Hebrews, we have Murtadeen, apostates. But how would we deal with those people? Kill them also and murdering them? Or insulting them? That won't help in any way. As I said, we need to find the, 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 the solution. The Prophet taught us something to be merciful and to be patient with the weak. And to be merciful and patient with the weak not necessarily means with those who are financially weak or physically weak. Also, it means to be patient and merciful to those who are weak minded, weak spirited, those people who have no faith. No Iman. We have to deal with them the same way as the doctor deals with the patient. Gently, with the hikmah, with wisdom. Especially a person who, who is on fire, a person who is, uh, uh, like, is, is burning. How will you deal with them? You have to quench the fire. You have to quench and put out the fire first before talking to the person. So those people, the atheists in the Ummah, or the person who burned the Qur'an, they are literally burning. But how they are burning? How are they burning? They are burning, they have problems in their lives, as everybody has problems in his life. But they are thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not helping them. They don't understand the real goal of life. Islam is the one to test you. They have no sabr. So they, they think that Allah, maybe they have like a, a financial problem or a disease, like a chronic disease. Then they think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing them or Allah is not helping them. So that leads them to be atheists. They think like that. So these people, they, they need to be helped, not cursed or insulted or killed. They have problems, they have no patience for the bala, for the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, cursing them or insulting them, it won't help in any way. Those people are burning, they have, they have fire inside their hearts, they have fire inside their souls, they couldn't express their feelings other than burning the Quran or talking bad about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, talking bad about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unfortunately. I'm not just defying, but this is the fact. And the first thing to do when we see an atheist on, on, on social media is to attack him and to insult him. And that's wrong. Insulting or cursing won't change his mind. And this is one of the bad characters that the Ummah had. Unfortunately, especially with these Islamic groups, Islamic jama'at. If you see them in the, in the, in the social media, inshallah all the jama'at in Islam, they are on, on the right, they are right inshallah. They are all khayr, but if you see them, how they are attacking one another in the social media, will be amazing. And they think that, no, I'm defending Islam. You're not defending Islam. You defend Islam by insulting the other people, by insulting other Muslims. The Prophet sallallahu said, Sibabu al-Muslim fusuq. To insult the Muslims, it's a fusuq, it's an act of disobedience. Wa qitaluhu kufra, and to fight him is a kufr. You think you are defending Islam by insulting others? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لم يكن فاحشا ولا متفاحشا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was neither obsessed nor would he use obsessed language. وكان يقول صلى الله عليه وسلم إن من خياركم خياركم أحاسينكم أخلاقا The best of you are those who have the best 
more and more comes. The best of you are those who are uh, those who have the best akhlaq. You find a Muslim, mashallah, feeling proud that he's insulting other Muslims on the, on the social media. Oh, I'm going to defend Islam, I'm, I'm gonna insult the person. And he forgets that it's any sin because, because of insulting other Muslims. Insulting Muslims, if that makes you happy, subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْمٌ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Allah says in the ayah, do not insult those idolaters, do not insult those who invoke other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lest they, they insult Allah in enmity without knowledge. Wallahi al-Azim, all these atheists in the Ummah, I mean in the Ummah, in the Muslim community, all these renegades and munafiqeen, all these people who are burning, who are burning the Quran, disrespecting the Islam, Wallahi, they don't know. Wallahi, they need to be educated. It's our duty to teach them. Wallahi, العظيم, they have misconcepts, misunderstanding of the Islam. If they really know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they really know the Quran, they wouldn't do such a thing. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who feel Allah most are the ulama, those who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these people, they need to be helped. Not to be cursed or insulted. So as I mentioned, unfortunately what you see in the social media, People using vulgarity, people, people using obsessed language. One the first thing, the first reaction when they see an atheist or somebody who is attacking the Islam. I know everybody gets angry, we don't like it, we hate that. But insulting or cursing, it's not the solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The best remedy is ilm and knowledge. Do you have any ilm? Do you have any knowledge? When you, when you insult somebody who is not on your uh, on your aqidah, insult somebody who is not on your way, on your path, then you think you are winning. You are not winning. Actually, you are losing. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هَلْ عِنْدَكُمْ مِنْ عِلْمٍ Do you have any ilm, any knowledge that you can produce for us? Show me what you have. Bring forth what you have. Bring your ilm. Don't insult. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْتُدُ الْفَعِشِ الْبَلِيمِ Allah dislikes the person who is vulgar. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the ayah, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ In debating with, with the people of scripture, with debating with the Jews and the Christians. He said, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَى كَلِمَةٍ سَوَائِمْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ All people of scripture come to an agreement, come to a word between us and you. But what is this agreement? What is this word? Is the ilm and knowledge. Allah na'buda in Allah that we, we, we don't worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how would you worship Allah without ilm, without knowledge? And in the end of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن تَوَلَّوا What would you do with them? If they turn back, what would you do? Would you insult them? No. فَإِن تَوَلَّوا فَقُولُوا شَهَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ If they turn back, then say, we are Muslims, witness that we are Muslims. And leave. That's it. Insulting and cursing is not from the character of the believer. لا يقول المسلم مستدابا ولا العالم It's not from the character of the believer to insult or to curse somebody. So in our time, Alhamdulillah, we have ulama, we have uh, muftis, Alhamdulillah, we have maulanas, we have Quran and Hufat. Alhamdulillah, everybody is happy with that. But what we need right now in the Ummah, we need theologians. We need people who know theology, ilm al kalam, to refute the suspicions. MashaAllah, we find so many ulama on the social media, so many halal and haram. Alhamdulillah. But what we need. When somebody comes to you and tells you that Islam was spread in the south, how would you refute that? How would you encounter? 
When somebody comes to you and tells you that Islam is a deen of terror, how would you encounter that? When somebody comes to you and tells you that if Allah exists, or that we wouldn't see all these wars, how would you encounter that? I think we have to learn theology, ilm al-kalam, to encounter all these suspicions. In the, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if the Sahaba had any question, they would go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he would clarify everything. But in our time, unfortunately, we don't see many theologians. So those people, they have questions and they have, they have no answers to these questions. So that leads them, I'm not just defying again, I'm not just defying what they are doing is covered, but that leads them to atheism, unfortunately. And in Islam, we have something called istitaba. And everybody is talking about istitaba. Istitaba means if somebody does an act of disbelief, an act of kufr, then you ask him to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for three days. If not, if he, if he doesn't, then you have to implement the sharia, al qisas But what is the istitaba? If somebody does something like an act of kufr of disbelief, we ask him for tawbah, but how would we ask him for tawbah? Especially in our time. Do you think that you ask him for tawbah for three days, the first day you ask him for tawbah, then when he says no, then you go the second day, you ask him, please tawbah, then he says no, then the third day you ask him for tawbah, then he says no, then you then you now you implement the sharia, no. No way. In our time, you ask a person for a tawbah, especially if it's a person who burned the Quran because he, he comes from a Muslim back, an, an Islamic background. He came from a, a Muslim country, a Muslim family, a Muslim society. So if you would ask him for tawbah, you bring the alim, you bring a doctor, you bring a theologian, you bring a psychologist, maybe the person has a problem, has a chronic uh, mental disorder. Maybe the person is psychopath. Maybe the person, he was written. Maybe people, or he was under the ikrah, under the compulsion. People came to him and told him, maybe. They told him, if you don't burn the Quran in public, we would kill you, or we would burn you, we would kill your family. Maybe, we don't know. We always have maybe in Islam. You can't just go and shed the blood of a person without getting the full picture. <coughs> if he is your child, your son, and comes to you and tells you a suspicion about Islam. How would you deal with that? Would you kill him as well? Or would you insult him? You have to clarify everything. Islam is based on ilm on knowledge. You have any knowledge. But insulting and cancel anybody can, can insult. It's the easy, easiest thing. Anybody can insult. But who can produce ilm? Who can produce knowledge? to refute all this shubuhat and suspicions. Who can do that? Oh, let me go to the comment. I'm, I'm going to show him. I'm going to insult him. That's easy. Anybody can do it. They're talking about murdering the person. But before doing that, there are procedures to do. There are so many things to do. There are steps to do first. Easy in our time. Easy to say somebody is careful. Easy to say somebody, oh, it's going to Jahannam, like Jahannam is in your, it's in your hand. And we're not doing enough effort, we're not doing enough that we're on the social media. We're busy watching funny games, we're, we're watching funny videos. And once somebody now became a mortal, now we say, no, we have to kill him, we have to murder him, we have to shed his blood. That's not the way of that one. So, the people, as, as they mentioned, they were talking about shedding his blood and excusing him. We understand everybody was angry, but that's not the solution. Perhaps the person, after his tawbah, is going to be beneficial to the owner. Who knows? Maybe the person is a physicist. Maybe the person, perhaps the person is a scientist, a doctor, an expert in any field that he would benefit the Ummah. Look at Khalid ibn Walid, radiallahu anhu, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, pre-Islam. 
They were the enemies of Islam, but after Islam, the rest is history. Amr ibn As, they were the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But after Islam, the Ummah needs everybody. And to see the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one, the story, everybody knows about the story. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he was sitting in the masjid of the Sahaba, and a Bedouin came to the masjid due to all the respect. He and he urinated in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can you just imagine urinating in the masjid of Nabawi? Urinated in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people stood and they wanted to beat him up. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hold on, leave him, leave him alone, don't interrupt him even. Leave him alone. Let him finish. Urinating in the masjid. He has something inside, he has to take it out. So let him take it out. After he finished, now the discourse began. After he finished, now the Prophet is explaining to him in a merciful way. You urinate it, it's okay, no problem. But Al Masajid, the Masajid is for Dikr and Quran. We don't urinate here with the Hikmah, with wisdom, with mercy. And the person he said, Allahumma arhamni warham Muhammad wa la tarham ba'dana abada ahad al-abada oh Allah, bestow your mercy on me and bestow your mercy on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do not bestow your mercy on anyone else along with us. Because of the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, laqad hajjarta wasi'an, you have limited or you have narrow a very fast thing which is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We read in a lot of stories about the mercy of the Prophet وسلم, yet we didn't learn, or many of us didn't learn anything. So what we need to do as Muslims, we need to learn علم. We need to learn how to defend Islam with علم, not with insulting and cursing. Because insulting and cursing, as I mentioned, won't help in any way. Ilm is the first thing. Knowledge is the first thing. Because those people who are burning the Quran, burning the copies of the Quran, those people, the enemies of Islam, they think they can stop Islam from spreading. But Alhamdulillah, Islam is growing. We are two billion Muslims now around the world. Islam is growing. You can just see how many people converted to Islam after the, the, the cartoon crisis in Denmark. How many people? How many people, how many far-right uh, leaders, especially in Dutch land, they converted to Islam after the cartoon crisis? They were the, the, in the anti-Islam movement, anti-Muslim movement, and they converted to Islam. How did they convert to Islam? Because they, they, uh, they go to the Facebook and the social media and they saw how many, oh, they insulted us, oh, let's be Muslims. No. They converted to Islam. Because when they opened the book of the Quran, they saw the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they opened the, the book of biography, the seal of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they saw the mercy of Islam, the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Sahaba came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they told him, we have one after ten, help because let's kill them. Let's excuse them. What he told them, what he replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they told him, let's excuse all this one after He said, Muhammad al What people would say that the Prophet Muhammad is killing his companions. The mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and everybody knows what the Munafiqin did to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he was merciful with them. Hatib bin Abi Bata, one of the Sahaba who was living in Mecca before the conquest of Mecca. And he was hiding his Islam. So the people, the Kuffar the of Quraysh, the believers of Quraysh, they didn't know that he was a Muslim. They were thinking, no, he is just a kafir, a mushrik like anybody. 
So the Prophet ﷺ was preparing to conquest Mecca. And Hafid bin Abi Banta, he heard that the Prophet ﷺ is coming to conquest Mecca. So he told his informations, he took his informations and he told the Kuffar of Quraysh, the disbelievers of Quraysh, that Muhammad ﷺ is coming to conquer, to, to conquer Mecca. When the Sahaba heard, and the Prophet ﷺ heard about this, the Sahaba told him, let's kill him, he's a munafiq. He said, no, لقد شهد معنا بدر. He was with us in Badr. When we were struggling, he was with us. The Prophet ﷺ didn't forget. He said he was with us in Badr, he was helping us in Badr. And maybe Allah ﷻ has forgiven his sins, leave him alone. This is the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ. The hikmah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَيْلِ شَرْجِ That Allah gives hikmah and wisdom to whom he will. وَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And whoever has been given wisdom has certainly been given much good. وَمَا يَفْلَكَرُوا إِلَّا أُلْلَ الْبَابِ And no one would remember except those of understanding. وَأَخْرُ دَعْوَانَا الْحَمْدِ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْحَمْدِ